It is time for member statements. I recognize the member for Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. I'm always glad to stand up for and strengthen public education. Today, however, we have to protect it and defend it from a sneaky Conservative agenda seeking to undermine it while folks are focused on a pandemic. Despite the challenges of online learning and the desperate need for affordable internet access for at-home learning, families and students are being forced to choose a year-long learning option for their children. They can choose either in-person learning at school or permanent virtual learning at home. Parents have concerns about underfunded, overcrowded classrooms and schools with fewer educators and caring staff who they hope will be vaccinated by September, and they hope the government will fund protective measures to keep everyone safe at school. Parents are also anxious about a permanent virtual learning option. They're being asked to choose whether or not to keep their children home permanently to learn online with TVO, TFO as the only proposed provider of asynchronous e-learning, and families aren't allowed to change that channel. Parents are anxious to make a year-long choice today when they don't know what life will look like next week or in September. The DDSB board chair sent a letter to the Minister of Education urging him to, quote, halt the proposed changes to offer virtual learning as a permanent choice for families in the role of TVO, TFO as the only provider of asynchronous e-learning, end quote. Education unions, parents and partners are also speaking out about permanent virtual learning. Speaker, education is supposed to be the great equalizer, but all things are not equal. And despite this government's strange obsession with their new mid-pandemic math tests for teachers, their plan for education does not up. Students, education workers, and families are suffering. This government must invest in public education and educators and get on side with health experts' recommendations to ensure schools will be safe places to learn when the time comes. That's a choice that should be easy to make. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last Saturday, I was invited to attend a virtual event celebrating the life and legacy of His Royal Highness Prince Philip. I'm most thankful for the Prince Philip's dedication to uplifting the young people participating through the Duke of Edinburgh Award. It is a youth development program that runs in 144 nations worldwide. I was honored to participate in this program when I was grade 10 student in Hong Kong. It helped to develop, develop me in four areas, personal interest, physical fitness, community service, and adventurous outdoor living. I was truly blessed to have been the first female to receive all three medals, bronze, silver, and gold. The Governor General of Hong Kong presented the gold medal to me at the governor's house. These awards gave me the courage, strength, and determination to accomplish my goals. I was able to run a successful business for more than 25 years and now serving Ontario as an MPP. It helped shape my life, and it continues to shape the lives of countless youth in Canada and around the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Spadina, Fort York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's Mental Health Week, and the, the lesson that we are to take away this week is to name it, don't numb it. To listen, to speak about the things that are causing us stress so that we can work with others to solve them. And this has been a particularly hard year in, in the riding of Spadina, Fort York. 70% of us live in high rises and 52% of us live alone. And the places that we normally connect with other people are closed, the restaurants, the patios and the gyms. There's constant construction noise. People are telling me about the homelessness crisis and we are experiencing a homelessness crisis that is really overwhelming our riding. We have people losing income and in their homes and we have people scrambling to get a vaccine. But people are coming together in the community to support each other. Right now, there's a team of, of uh, volunteers who are helping people to register for their vaccines. There's the Bike Brigade, the Spadina Fort York Community Care Program, and the Liberty Village Cares, and many other community groups who are out feeding vulnerable people through the pandemic. And we are connecting with each other on social media. We are doing what we can to help each other, but we need the government to do their part as well. We need the government to fix the supports for small businesses and their workers so that we don't lose one more small business in Spadina, Fort York, or anywhere in Ontario. We need them to restore the construction noise bylaw so that people aren't kept awake all night. We need them to fix the vaccine rollout, and we need them to take action on the homelessness crisis. 
We are supposed to name it and not numb it. I'm naming the things that this government needs to do to reduce the stress, to help us get through this pandemic, and to help maintain the mental health of all people in Spadina, Fort York, and across this province. Thank you. Thank you. The next statement, the member for Markham Unionville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This April spring break, I was delighted to host my first live Queen's Park virtual tour. Since being elected as MPP for Markham Unionville, one of my favorite events to organize is the annual Queen's Park tour. Although in-person tour didn't happen this year, I was excited this virtual tour could happen, al allowing Markham Unionville families to explore Queen's Park from the safety and comfort of their homes. Led by our tour guide, we toured the lobby and chamber, all the while discovering the architecture features and history of the legislative building. As part of the event, we also has the fun trivia question and get a get to know your MPP segment, where I have the opportunity to share my background and my current role as the MPP. From the engagement, I trust that attendees enjoyed this virtual tour and learned more about how I serve Markham Unionville in my MPP role. Mr. Speaker, Ontario's COVID-19 vaccination program is underway with almost 5.4 million doses administered to date. As eligible continue to expand, I encourage everyone to embrace the opportunity and book their vaccine. Every vaccine administered is a step towards to reducing COVID-19 transmission and for our province to hopefully return back to normal soon. And when that day comes, I would be delighted to invite members of Markham Unionville to come right here for an in-person Queen's Park tour. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next member's statement, the member for Toronto Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Last month, Justice Gloria Epstein released her independent review into missing persons investigations in the church in Wellesley Village. The report found that police have systemically discriminated against 2SLGBTQ plus people and communities. From the bathhouse raids to carding, from the mishandling of missing persons reports to the failure to respond to community safety concerns, all of this history has contributed to a mistrust of the police. As a result, the most marginalized of communities have been denied access to justice. Justice Epstein's independent review showed the damaging effects of differential treatment on communities that are over-policed and underserved. Systemic discrimination contributed to the police's failings in several cases, and this ultimately cost lives. We need to fundamentally change how our province keeps people safe. That includes reconsidering the role that police play in our communities and investing in community supports. I call on the Solicitor General to work to implement the recommendations of this independent review to overhaul the institutions that prevent police transparency and accountability and take action today to save queer and trans lives. 2SLGBTQ plus people deserve to feel safe and protected in their communities. I want to thank Justice Epstein for her work and offer my support to the loved ones of the victims in the report. We must never forget their names. Salim Essen, Abdul Basir Faizi, Karishna Kumar Karanagatnam, Majid Kahan, Andrew Kinsman, Dean Lisowick, Sarush Mahmood, Skanda Navarantham, Alora Wells, and Tess Ritchie. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Simcoe Gray. Speaker, I rise this morning to congratulate Dr. Farrell Anderson, who recently received the University of Toronto Faculty of Dentistry Alumni of Influence Award. Dr. Anderson is enjoying a well-earned retirement after having practiced dentistry in Collingwood for more than 45 years. His professional life and civic engagement have had a lasting impact on the well-being of our community. Coming from a modest family background in Jamaica, Dr. Anderson appreciates the challenges faced by those less fortunate. He never turned away a patient, often providing services at reduced fees or without fee for those who didn't qualify for assistance. His charity extended to his home country, where, for over 20 years, he volunteered dental services for several weeks at a time at the Foundation for Independent Self-Help Medical Dental Clinic in Jamaica. His outreach activities helped many young people in Collingwood overcome their fear of the dentist chair. Through the Brushomania program, he, he visited area schools where he explained dental hygiene and demonstrated the tools used in his practice. Dr. Anderson has volunteered with numerous organizations, including the E3 Community Living, or Community Living Organization, which seeks to serve the needs 
of vulnerable Collingwood residents. Farrell Anderson was the first black candidate to be elected to Collingwood Town Council in the 1970s. He served as chair of the Police Services Board and helped lead the development of a modern fire department. His contributions to country and community have earned him, earned him many well-deserved accolades and awards, including the Order of Collingwood and the Queen Elizabeth Jubilee Award. Dr. Farrell Anderson is a Collingwood treasure. Our community is grateful for his long, lifelong commitment to his fellow citizens and to his profession, and I am proud to have supported his nomination for the Alumni of Influence Award. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this week is Mental Health Week in Ontario. Every year during the first week of May, we work to raise awareness about the importance of mental health. Mental health is health, Mr. Speaker, and this year the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the fact that now, more than ever, we need to give time and attention to the work done by organizations across Ontario. Last week, Mr. Speaker, I hosted a virtual town hall to discuss mental health issues. We were very pleased to have as our special guest Ontario's very first Minister of Mental Health and Addictions, the Honourable Michael Tobolo, who contributed his time, his expertise and his compassion to the event. And it certainly went over time because the dialogue was wonderful. Etobicoke Lakeshore residents who joined us at the virtual meeting were eager to discuss mental health services for children and youth, the importance of providing COVID-19 vaccines to people suffering from mental health issues, and raising awareness regarding supports that are available, including Ontario's online programs like Bounce Back, designed to help them overcome symptoms of anxiety and gain new skills to, re to regain positive mental health. I encourage residents across Ontario to take time this week to learn more about how they can support positive mental health for themselves and their loved ones. Please remember, you are not alone and help is available. Thank you. Next, we have the member for Humber River, Black Creek. Thank you, Speaker. I continue to work with our incredible local health teams in establishing pop-up and mobile vaccinations to fill in the gaps of the vaccine rollout. In just an hour from now, our next pop-up vaccination clinic is set to start daily until Thursday at Habitant Arena on Weston Road. I will be joining them later today. And this Friday, we will be running another pop-up at Grand Ravine Community Centre until Sunday. Through this ongoing work, we have quickly doubled the vaccination rates of neighbourhoods throughout our riding of Humber River, Black Creek. I want to thank Cheryl Prescott, Michelle Weston, Josie Nelson and the entire Black Creek Community Health Centre team who are there right now at Habitant Arena. They continue to work tirelessly to improve the health of our community and have been a shining star during this pandemic. I also want to thank the University Health Network and Global Medic who have been instrumental in delivering this ongoing local vaccination uh, network. My NDP colleagues and I have been calling for an equitable distribution of vaccines, meaning more supply to hotspot communities and prioritizing frontline essential workers. I want to thank the team at our local Humber River Hospital who chose to offer pop-up vaccination opportunities to my community rather than wait untold weeks before the central booking line would make vaccines available to all of those 18 plus. Thank you, Suda Cuddy and Ruben Rodriguez, whose team has been working so hard in vaccinating people door to door within high-rise apartment buildings within my community. I welcome the news yesterday to finally open the central booking line to those 18 plus in hotspot communities like mine. We have been calling for this for quite some time now. And to keep things moving, it is so important to secure enough vaccine supply so people can get vaccinated as soon as possible. We must ensure that the vaccine rollout is an equitable one. Thank you. Thank you. The next member statement, the member for Durham. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, 2021 marks Port Perry's sesquicentennial. In June 1871, 150 years ago, the County of Ontario passed a bylaw to incorporate the village of Port Perry, officially separating it from Reach Township. During a time when the traditional ways we love to gather as a community have been put on hold, the festivities this June will celebrate the power of community over 150 years with the theme, Community Celebrating Community. Celebrations will be held in accordance with public health guidelines while still showcasing the town's unique history and colour. Local print shop PP Print, in conjunction with the township of Scugog, I am told will be producing a com commemorative booklet uh, that will feature stories and pictures of local history, traditional recipes provided by local restaurants, and a list of 150 things to do in Fort Perry. Speaker, there are so many things I love about Port Perry. I love the little shops and cafes, the beautiful boardwalk along Lake Scugog. 
I love the town's vibrant arts and culture scene. I think of Town Hall 1873, and I love the strong community, family-like spirit that makes people feel welcomed and cared for. The warmth of the Port Perry community has always stood out to me, and during these challenging times, the heart of Port Perry continues to shine through. On June 9th, I look forward to attending the kickoff flag raising event and celebrating one of the best little towns in Ontario. Thank you very much. The next member's statement, the member for Northumberland, Peterborough South. Thank you, Speaker. It's an honour to rise in the House. Speaker, Canada must act now to secure our borders. Over 90 per cent of new cases in Ontario are variants. We know these variants are concerning and are having a greater effect on younger Ontarians. These variants of concerns didn't swim here. They didn't fly here. They were carried here via infected passengers who, in turn, spread these variants through our communities. Tens of thousands of international travellers land at Pearson and continue to land in our province. Don't take my word for it, Speaker. Here's what Dr. Colin Furness, epidemiologist at U of T, had to say. Our border controls are like a sieve. We could do so much better. It's not rocket science. Speaker, I agree. It isn't. Many of our closest allies got it right. The UK have banned entry into the UK from people who've been in or through over 40 countries worldwide. Australia has restricted entry to Australian nationals or nationals of New Zealand. From day one, Premier Ford has called for increased testing. He's called to fix the loopholes at our border. It was Premier Ford who brought antigen testing to Pearson. We continue to call on the Liberals to act now, fix the loopholes. Speaker, the good news is we've vaccinated over 5 million Ontarians. We want our lives back. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Over 420,000 Ontarians booked tests yesterday alone, and in the time from this morning till I delivered this today, over 150,000 Ontarians have booked again. Let's get our lives back. My message to the Liberals is simple. Stop playing games, do the right thing, fix the loopholes at our land borders, and secure our borders now. That concludes our members' statements for this morning.